I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And praise his holy name. And worship him in spirit and in truth, for he alone is worthy of all glory, all honor, and all of our praises. Amen. So while I live, I will bless the Lord. I will sing praises unto him while I have my being. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. The songwriter said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Come on, that's something to get excited about. Purchase of God, born of his spirit. Come on, are you born of his spirit? Have you been washed in his blood? Is this your story? Is this your song? If this is your story, give him a praise this morning. If this is your story, lift him up this morning. Oh, our God, just like most men like to hear you send him up accolades. Come on, somebody. Tell him he's wonderful. Tell him he's glorious. Tell him you love him. Tell him he's a mighty God, an awesome father. Come on, has he been anything to you? He's been better to me than I've been to myself, so I offer him a sacrifice if I have to, of praise, of honor, of glory, because he's worthy. He's worthy of all. He's worthy of all. He's worthy of the, the breath in the wind. He's worthy of the wind waving the trees. He's worthy of the flowers blooming, the grass growing up. He's worthy of every dew drop giving him praise. Amen. He's worthy when that rave comes and crashes that beach and says, thou art a mighty God. He's worthy of praise when it stops and doesn't come and cause a tsunami, but it stops and rolls back away. He's still worthy of praise. He's a good God, a mighty God. And he's worthy. He's worthy. Shall we praise him? Because he's a promise keeper, amen? He promised the church that he would send pastors after his own heart. Amen. And, and he kept that promise. And so we celebrate the gift of that promise to us today. And celebrating our pastor on his second anniversary. Amen. 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 God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised this morning. May we pray. Come Holy Spirit. Come Heavenly Dove. Father God, prepare us now, even now to be a sanctuary. Move up out, outside of ourselves, God. Help us to concentrate on you, who you are, who you've been to us, creating us a clean heart, renew a right spirit in us individually, God, and in us collectively, Lord. Bless, Lord, this experience, this worship service, not our will, God. Thy will be done in us and through us this day. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Move how you want to move. Do what it is you want to do in us and through us. Get glory out of each and every heart present in this room. Those on the airways, God. Those listening, get glory, God, in that house. In Jesus' name, have your way. Amen, amen, and amen again.
your name, O oh Lord our God in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is coming from Luke, the fifth chapter. And I will be reading verses one through seven. Luke, the fifth chapter. Beginning at the first verse, you will find the word of God recorded on this wise. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gassim and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. God's word for God's people. May we pray. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. If thou withdraw thyself from us, whither shall we go? Our Father and our God, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. In our mind and on our lips, God, we come to say thank you. We thank you for this day, a brand new day we'd never seen before, God. We thank you for this breath. We thank you for new mercies, for the grace that kept and watched over us through last night's slumber, God. We say thank you for bringing us to this point safely, God, we say thank you. For the ability to hear, see, and move, God, we say thank you. For this reasonable portion of health and strength, God, we say thank you. For our loved ones to our right and to our left, God, we say thank you thank you for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. We say thank you for having food prepared for us on our tables this morning, clothes for us to wear, God, shoes for us to put on our feet, God. We say thank you, God, for blessing us exceedingly, abundantly, above, God, all that we asked or knew to ask, God. We say thank you. For the secret desires of our heart, God, that you've already manifested in our presence, God, we say thank you for protection for every hedge, for just keeping us, God, for moving in our midst, God, for watching over us. Lord, we say thank you. For bringing loved ones home, God, that strayed away from your spirit, God, that strayed out of place because of dementia, God, that strayed for whatever reason, God, for bringing them back home safely, God, without hurt, harm. We say thank you, God. We give you glory. You said we have not because we ask not, God. So we come boldly before your throne of grace right now asking you to meet every need. Pour out your spirit, God, on all flesh, God, right now. Move according to your divine will, God. Not our will, God. Thy will be done. For the names that will be called on our prayer list, God, we ask that you would touch in a mighty way, God. 
that you would touch them bodily, God, that you would touch them physically, God, that you would touch their homes, God, that you would touch everyone that is concerned and cares for them, God. That you would anoint the doctors, God, that will attend to them, God. That you would bless the medicine, God, that they will consume, God. That you would do all, God, all that we don't even know to ask, God. We thank you because we know right now, Father, you're sitting at the right hand praying for us. You said, and we know we don't know what we ought to pray for. But you, God, you're all knowing, knowing God. You've always known what we stood in need of, even what we stand in need of right now. So bless God. Bless every heart, God. Move, God, in every spirit, God. Unite every spirit. Help us to come together, be together. Help us to be one church, God. Thank you. Forgive us for our many sins, God. And bless us, Lord. Bless our pastor and bless his family in a mighty way, God. Blow their minds, God, again, because I know you've already done it before, God, but do it again, God. And then after you do it, do it again, Lord. And then after you do that, do it again, Lord. Eyes haven't seen you said it in your word, God. Ears haven't heard, God. They've heard a lot of things, God. So show them something they never heard. Show them something they never seen. Bless them in a way that they still yet doubt, God, because sometimes our flesh gets weak, God. Move in their children's lives, God. Move in their grandchildren's lives, God. Anoint, God, that extended family, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for what you're doing through them and through him, God, because we need a word. And we don't just need a word on Sunday, God. We need a word every day, not just on Wednesday nights, God. We need a word every day. So we thank you for how you're moving. We thank you that by the spirit we can get a word from him every single day, every single moment, God. And so we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for, for him because you set him in this place, God. As the angel of this house to speak directly to this congregation. Give us hearing ears, God. You said in your word, he didn't have an ear, let him hear. Help us to hear, God, clearly what the spirit has to say to us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Anoint, anoint, anoint afresh, God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh right now in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.
Amen. Amen. You may take your seats if you're able. Allow me, allow me the opportunity to present to you our mistress of ceremonies this morning, none other than our very own Elder Durant. Amen. Amen. Receive ye her. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, come on. I know that she told you to have your seat, but the Spirit of the Lord is in the house this morning. Can you feel him? Can you feel the Spirit of the Lord in the house this morning? Can you feel the presence of God in here? He's so tangible that you can not only touch him, but you can taste him. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you don't mind, can, can we get a little bit more of that? If you don't mind, choir, can y'all stand up and give us a little bit more of that? Amen? Because he knows our name. Come on, come on, stand to your feet and let's worship the Lord this morning. God is doing something in the house. Come on, sing with the choir. I'll oh, bless his name. Come on, come on. Come on, choir. Come on, come on, musician. I'll oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, worship him with us. Come on, worship the Lord this morning. Come on, come on. Oh, he's walking with us this morning. Oh, God. He's talking with us right now. Can you, can you hear him? Can you hear him? Oh, he's telling us something today. Do you feel him in your spirit? Oh, he's telling us who we are to him. Yay! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, bless him this morning. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, come on. Oh, how you tell. Yay, God. Yes, Lord. That I am. That we are his own today. Do you hear him? Do you hear him today? He knows each and every one of us. He knows by name. He knows by sight. He knows because he called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Ah, bless you, bless you, bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. of his eye. We are the royalty of God. We're children of the most high God. We're precious in his sight. He's telling us who we are this morning. Do you hear him? Do you hear him calling your name? Do you hear that whisper? I'm calling on you. I'm pulling at your heart. I'm calling your name. Come on, come on up higher. Come on, come on, come on. Bless his name. God is good. He's calling on us this morning. He's doing great and mighty things. Amen. Ah, oh, bless his name. Let's give the choir a hand. Let's give the musicians a hand. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Give him a hand and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is good. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good morning, Basil Creek. God is good this morning. And I bless his holy name. I bless him. Do you feel him today? 
Do you hear him this morning? He's whispering. He's not boisterous, but he's whispering. Ah, the Holy Spirit is here. And he's going to do just what we ask him to do. Ah, he had all see God. Ah, bless his name. Ah, bless his name. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Ah, bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you this morning. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Father, for meeting us here. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is good. I greet you this morning in the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Good morning, Basil Creek. Good morning, Basil Creek. Good morning. Good morning, Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning. Isn't God good? Has he done anything for you today? Ah, the presence of the Lord is definitely in the house. Amen. And we bless him. Amen. Ah, we bless him. Good morning, Pastor Patterson. Good morning, Lady Marcia Patterson. Good morning to the Patterson family. Today is pastor's anniversary. Give God glory. Yes, yes. Y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. We say that the Lord put him here. Now you guys can do better than that. We're not reverence the man. It's the God that's in the man. Amen. And what he's bringing to the table. Amen. He's feeding us from the depths of his soul. He's fasting for us, amen. He's laboring before the Lord for us, amen, so we can do better than that. He's not only praying for our souls, he's praying for our children, he's praying for our families, amen. Amen, if we need him, he's there. His wife is there, amen. God is good. How is good. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And welcome to Basil Creek. <laughs> God is good. I greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus again. Welcome this morning. Welcome to the second pastoral anniversary for Pastor Patterson. Amen. I'm glad that you're here. I know that they're glad that you're here. But most of all, God is glad that you're here. Amen. You're not here by happenstance. You're not here because you had nothing else to do this morning. You're not here because you just fell out of bed and fell in church. You're here because the Lord ordained for this day for you to be here at this hour, at this very moment. Amen. And he made the way possible for you to be here. Amen. You're here. No one got in an accident. No one is short of breath. No one lost an eyesight. No one lost a limb. No one lost their train of thought. Nobody hair fell out this morning. Nobody lost their compass and how to get here. And if you did, you had your GPS in your car or on your phone. No one lost anything, amen. So we're in the house of God, so we might as well have what? Church. Let's have some church, amen. God is good. Let's have some church. Let's enjoy Jesus. And while we enjoy him, let's enjoy one another. Let's do that. Can we do that this morning? We're going we to do that. Y'all want me to hush? <laughs> we're going <laughs> we're gonna to have some fun, okay? <laughs> let's not only have church, but let's have fun, amen? Amen. Let's enjoy one another, amen? God is good this morning. People of God, you look beautiful today. Um, again, I do want to welcome everyone for being here. I do thank you as well as the pastor and the Patterson family for being here. I thank God for the choir today, amen? I do, I do, I do, I do. I give God glory for you because they're going to usher us in a new place, amen? Y'all going to do the amen by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's not just sit and just be watchful, but let's be engaging with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And with one another and let God have his way. So I suggest that you take your hand, your right hand, and loosen that seatbelt or your left hand and loosen that seatbelt off of you and allow the Holy Spirit to move you. Allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in you. 
Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to have its way in the house of God. And as long as it's the Holy Spirit, we all good. We all on one accord. But anything that's not of God, it has got to flee. And we're going to ask them to open up the church door so it can get up out of here. Because we're trying to have church. We're trying to go to the next level. We're trying to enjoy Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to enjoy the Lord. Amen. Because I know how to praise him. I know how to get the devil up off of me. I know how to get the enemy up out of my camp. Do you? Well, if you don't, you're going to learn this morning. If you don't know how to get the enemy out your camp, out your house, out your face, you're going to learn this morning. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Again, welcome. And we're going to move out of the way. I am so we can have way for the announcements today. Amen. Glory to God. It's March the 3rd. It's the first of the month. We got to do March birthdays. I forgot. I told y'all we're going to have fun. Hey, hallelujah. Okay, so the choir's going to sing. Happy birthday, all March babies. Stand up. Where you at? In the house. Woo! All right. Woo! All right. Woo! Happy birthday. Hit it, choir. to all the March babies. Amen. Glory to God. And celebrate the whole month of March. Now, don't y'all forget. You already doing it? All right. Now, she got it. Everybody else got it. You celebrate the entire month of March. From the 1st to the 31st, right? Yeah. How many other days in the month of March? That's how many you celebrate. Amen. Amen. Now we're here for the announcements. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Good morning, Basil Creek family and friends, and welcome to our service. We are so glad you decided to join us today. We're excited to celebrate the pastor's second anniversary today, March 3rd, during morning worship. Directly after service, pizza will be served at 1115. A basket for gifts will be available in the front entrance of the church. Please come out and fellowship with us after worship. Join the Health and Wellness Ministry for free lawn dancing classes every second Saturday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. The next session will be Saturday, March the 9th. Everybody, it's Easter time again, Sunday, March the 31st. The children will present the Easter story as told in Mark 16, 1 through 8. The lines are short and simple, so all can participate. See Rhonda Curtis to secure your child's lines today. An Easter egg hunt will immediately follow the service. Plastic eggs filled with individually wrapped candy and treats can be dropped off anytime between now and March the 24th. Children's Church will be held March 31st, April 28th, and May 19th. The Spring Youth Outing will be held at the Museum of Life, Science, 
April the 6th at 10 a.m. Please sign up at basilcreekmbc.org. For any questions, see Brittany Collins. Come join our children's choir. Practice is March the 16th at 10 a.m. They will sing March the 17th. Practice again on April the 20th at 10 a.m. And they will sing on April the 21st. If you have any questions, please contact Katina Turner. The National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences will host its 2024 Women's Health event on Saturday, April the 13th at Hillside High School. This event includes free health screenings, health education sessions, and more. Registration is free and it will include an opportunity for participants, for participants to receive free 3D mammograms. To be considered for a free mammogram, you must register online and complete an eligibility questionnaire by March the 15th. See Marissa Ramos for details. Sunday school is held in the fellowship hall from 8.30 to 9.15 every Sunday morning. Reverend Patterson's office hours are Tuesdays 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays by appointment. Our main telephone conference number is 605-562-8401. The access code is 2206554. Please join us on the conference line for prayer service on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. The Outreach Ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson's Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. Your giving and prayers are needed and most appreciated. Giving can be done through the collection plate at the back of the church, U.S. Mail, PayPal via our church website, basilcreeknbc.org or you can drop it off on Sundays between 10.30 and 11. Blessings! Stay strong, stay focused, and trust God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. Amen. I bless him. I bless him this morning. You guys look like y'all are waiting for something spectacular to happen today. Are y'all waiting? It's like y'all in waiting. I'm in waiting. I have a great expectation because the man of God that I know is going to bring a powerful word this morning, I love to hear him preach. I love to hear this brother preach. I really do. And I know God has got a word. I know he does, and I know he's been sitting on it, and I'm excited. Are you excited to hear what God has to say to us this morning? Amen. I'm excited. Amen. And I, I, I just want God to do what he wants to do through him. I want God to say what he wants to say to him. I want him to come under subjection of the Holy Spirit and let God use him and move him by way of the Holy Spirit today. Amen. I bless the Lord this morning. It is, as our pastor would say, it is customary that we bless our tithes and our offerings and our givings. Amen. So if everyone would stand to your feet while we go before the throne of grace and we tell God thank you. Amen. Father, we bless you this morning, oh God, and we pray, God, for your will to be done. Once again, we tell you thank you for being the God that you are, the Alpha and Omega of our souls. Father God, we thank you, oh Father God, for how we've, God, surrendered our offerings and blessings unto you, oh God, that there may be meat in this house, oh Father, and God, that you will prove yourself to us, oh glory to God. So Father God, as we surrender, God, the tithes and the offerings for the upbuilding of your kingdom, we ask God that you bless it, oh Father God, the way you deem necessary. Help us to be good steward over that, God, that you blessed us with. Help us, God, to be able to provide for the house of God as you provide for our house, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we glorify you today, God, and we pray that you touch, God, these blessings, these offerings, Father, and God, that you bless them, God, that they may expand and do great and mighty things, oh God, not just in this house, but in others' house, in the community, God, and all the parts of the world. We bless your name today. We thank you, God, for having the finances to be able to give, that we will not rob you, oh Father, 
but we would give out of the abundance of our heart and give what is duly and rightfully yours. Now, God, we thank you for these blessings and ask that you bless each and every house today. Bless those, God, that were able to give and for those that were not able at this time that you will bless them that they can. We thank you for being the God that you are, a faithful God, a just God, a blessing God. Oh, God, because we know that your hand is not slack concerning your promises. And, God, we know that they are yea and amen. And for that, we tell you thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that everyone that has breath say amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Now, I bless the Lord today, and I want to say this. This choir is going to give us a selection. After they've given us a selection, the next voice that you will hear will be the speaker of the hour. Amen. We ask that you not sit in your seat of judgment. We ask that you pray for him as he stand before us and pour out of himself. Amen. It is not easy to stand before a people of God and render God's word. It is not always easy, but God has given us a word nonetheless. And we pray, I pray this morning that you take the mufflers off. You take those stout heartedness out and you receive what God has for us. Amen. If you would please point your hands to the to the pulpit at this 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 great preacher. And we're going to render a prayer before the choir give us a selection. Is that okay? Is that am, am I out of order here? It'll be all right. Father, we bless and praise your name this morning. God, we lift this mighty man of God before you, God, and we ask God that you touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father God, we pray, God, that the word that you've given him, oh God, that God, that it would do just what you said it would do. Help him to surrender under the almighty of the presence of an almighty God. Help him to surrender under the Holy Spirit, oh Father God, that you will have free course, God, not just in him, but in us. Do what you want to do, oh Father. Say what you want to say, however you want to say it, as long as it is of you. And we will forever give your name praise and glory and honor. Strengthen him, oh God, as he pour out of himself. In the mighty name of Jesus, anoint him afresh. Keep him, O oh God, even when he doesn't even know he's being kept. Order his footsteps in your word as he continue, God, to do great things for the kingdom building of you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing choir. Preach, preacher.
I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything, more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. I worship and adore you. Just want. Tell you that I love you more than anything, more than anything. I had to sing that for myself real quick. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I'm going to say it to somebody who catches it. To God be the glory for the great and marvelous things he's doing in this building. He's doing today. He did yesterday. He's going to do tomorrow. To God be the glory. I got to take this thing off because I'm going to kick it off anyway. Amen. But if you know how good God has been in your life. See, this is the time you got to take time for yourself and think about your life. You can't think about your neighbor's life right now, but you got to think about what God has did in your life. How he's made a way. How he's kept you. How he did it over and over and over and over and over again. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. If we had 10,000 tongues, it's still not enough to say thank you. You can't thank him enough. If you just take 30 seconds, just, just start to think back over your life. Think how he kept you, how he brought you out of the hospital beds, how, how, how he brought you out of that wreck, how he brought you out of that divorce, how he brought you out of all this stuff, and he still kept you. I'm going to talk to Pastor real quick. How he's kept you through these last two years. How, how he's made a way through these last two years. How he kept your mind through these last two years. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I feel good right now. I don't know about y'all, but I feel good. Amen, amen. Amen. Let's get into this word, amen. Amen. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful selection. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, the sound techs, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Security, everybody. Amen, amen. As we stand here on this second anniversary of our pastor, can we just celebrate him one more time? I don't mean just have celebrate him, but celebrate him, celebrate him. Amen. And you can't celebrate him without celebrating his first lady. Celebrate her right now, amen. 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 Y'all can have your seats. I won't be here too long. I don't want to be between y'all and the peaks and the wings. Amen. Y'all look good in y'all dental. Amen. Amen. 
I, I won't be before you long today, but I, I thought it was right, and, you know, I don't take this privilege lightly to speak on the pastor's anniversary. Uh, that's a big deal. In preacher world, that's a big deal. Hey, y'all, y'all can take it lightly, but we don't take it lightly, amen? Amen. Um, but on this second anniversary, I want to stay with this theme of what's going on this year, and that's launching out deep. So that's why the scripture seems very familiar, and you've heard him talking about launching out into the deep. So we're going to stay right there today. Is that all right, Pastor? All right, all right. You've heard the scripture earlier read, and I'm going to read it one more time, and I'm going to stick out and point out a few things, and we're we going to jump into it. Amen. So if you turn with your Bibles to Luke, the fifth chapter, the first to the seventh verse, the word of the Lord says, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it might be a little bit different than King James Bible, as long as it says Bible, you're in the right place, amen? Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. He sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've been out here all night working all night, but have caught nothing. But yet, if you say so, yet, if you say so, I will let down my nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Grace to God, we thank you for this day, God. Now it's preaching time, Father God. So we ask you to do what you want to do, God. I know I wrote a few things with this paper, God, but now I ask you to have your way. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do with these words on this page to at least touch one person and say, what must I do to be saved, God? Now, God, decrease me and elevate you so they might not see me all in this denim, but they see you in all your glory. So God, we thank you, we honor you, and we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do with this word, God. God, we love you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. For the next few minutes I have, if I could, if y'all can go up my vivid imagination, I want to talk from the thought, if the Nets could talk. If the nets could talk. Can I set up the text and paint the picture for you this morning and allow me to work the text? So, so, so when you look at this text, we find Jesus the teacher. Yes, we know that Jesus was a healer, a fixer, a deliverer, and all that stuff. But Jesus, but, but if you look at the t- Jesus teaching, he had a wonderful ministry of teaching throughout the Bible. You find Jesus was a teacher's teacher, if you t- can, can coin that. As you begin to work this text this morning, you find that Jesus, the teacher, had a large crowd as he walked along the lake of Gennesaret, better known as the Sea of Galilee. And they pressed on him so much that he seized two empty boats and sets, in the, and sets into the boat of Simon and instructs him to push out a ways from the shore so that he could speak to the crowds. See, the Sea of, sea of Galilee, by, by uh, scholars' accounts, say that it was in a shape that resembled a heart. And the reason why it resembled a heart, and Jesus knew that with his infinite wisdom, that he got onto the sea and pushed out a little ways that his volume would carry back to the shores and speak to everybody that was on the shore. See, see, he began to teach to the crowd, and when he had finished, he told them to launch out into the deep after a night of failure. See, he's teaching to the crowd, but he's teaching to the fishermen at the same time. See, if you, listen to my, if you listen to my word, if you just trust my word, we're, we're going to get something you never had. See, so you can do something you didn't think could happen. This is why I love Jesus, because he can teach to two crowds at one time. See, 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 he can speak to one crowd over here and still be speaking to somebody else over there all at the same time. 
See, see, I know I have one witness that was sitting in church one time, listening to a word, and, and, and then the word go forth, and it feels like the word was speaking directly to you. And you looking around at everybody else like, what's wrong with everybody else? Because I'm getting the word. I hear everything coming in. And you looking like, what's wrong with them? Because you filled up with your spirit. That's, that's how God, Jesus' ministry operated. We also find in the text, we find Simon who's tired, frustrated, and trying to figure out how he's going to take care of his family. See, I can imagine when Jesus instructed him to not just push away, and then he teaches the crowd, but then he says, launch out into the deep. I can imagine Simon saying, now, Jesus, look now, I'm tired, I'm frustrated because we've been out here all night, and I'm ready to go lay down, I ain't brushed my teeth, I ain't washed my face, I ain't put on no deodorant. Now, Jesus, what are you talking, what are you saying now? See, 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 but put yourself in Simon's shoes for a second because what Simon said is it was nicer than many of us would think, be thinking in our heads because if many of us would say what we were really thinking in our heads. Lord Jesus, I know Simon in his head was like, now, 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 I know you don't, you know you don't fish during the daytime. Uh, uh, now, you was a carpenter, and I'm a fisherman. Now, you need to stay in your lane. See, see, see then, then you come up where when I'm ready to go and tr tell me, tell me back to go back out into the deep this morning after I've been out all night. See, some of us need to give God praise that everything you were thinking, didn't, you didn't say. I'm going to say that again. Everything you were thinking, you didn't say. I'm going to say that to myself. See, every text message you were about to send, I thank God you deleted them. Every DM you was about to send, thank God you deleted them. Every email you want to send to your boss, thank God you deleted them before you sent them. See, 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 you have a tired Simon saying, we have been out here all night. But he said, Jesus, if you say so. I will. I need to talk to the real folk this morning that, 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 that didn't understand what Jesus was doing in your life, where, where he was taking you, what season this was in your life. Jesus is teaching to a tired Simon that is, that's ready to go home that he has to launch back out into the deep. But if you will go a little further with me and allow me to use my vivid imagination, he has been on the lake of Gennesaret where he hears Jesus teaching, he, and he's frustrated Simon saying, I want to launch back into the deep when I've been out here all night. But when I was reading the text, something on the front of the boat began to talk to me. They said, you, you always listening to the side of Jesus. We hear, we hear what Simon is talking about in his frustrated state, but I got something to say. See, I know that there's some nets, these nets, th these nets that I'm talking about that I want to talk today. Because I called him up and had a conversation with the Nets. Pastor, on your second anniversary, I believe I can, these Nets can speak to somebody on 1228 Wilburn Road this morning. Um, I, I believe that the, my duties, my functions, my livelihood, and my makeup can help somebody today to be ready for greater. See, if you listen to me for the next few minutes, I can give you the blueprint on how to handle the untruths of life. So can, I, can you allow me to talk, uh, talk to the Nets this morning? Is that all right? Just for a few minutes? The first thing the Nets told me and, and talked when we was having a conversation is, you need to know who the supporter of the Nets are. The supporter of the Nets. See, the text says, after a long night of fishing, they had caught nothing and they were tired and frustrated. And Jesus finds, in the shore washing, he finds them on the shore washing their nets. See, you have to read the text slowly because the text says that they caught no fish, but it didn't say they didn't catch anything. See, there's debris in the nets. <laughs> there's trash in the nets. <laughs> there's vegetation in the nets. There's sand in the nets. There's rocks in the nets. The nets were useless stuff that was stuck in them. The nets told me to tell you that you have to have some people around you that love you so much that they'll help you clean your nets. That's why you got to check your circle because everybody in your circle ain't meant for you. Because when it gets down rough, you need to make sure somebody can help you clean your own nets. See, you need people who love you enough that if you're going to get ready for what you, and you work your full potential, I got to help them clean their nets. Because washing the nets is not just able to wash them unless useless things, but also you got to preserve the nets. Because the heat and the wear and tear and the debris and the bacteria in the sea is not enough just to clean me, but you also got to keep it moist for preservation. 
So you don't need somebody that just helps you keep, keep this. You don't need somebody that would not just keep you clean, but love you enough to keep you alive. Not just to use you. <laughs> not just to pull on you. Not just to drain you. Not just to leech on you, but to pour back into you to give you life to help you keep on winning. <laughs> Can we be delivered from people who always want to pull you down, stress you out, wear your nerves and all that stuff, and don't preserve you? <laughs> I'm talking to pastor. If nobody else gets it, it's all right. He gets it. <sighs> Deliver us from relationships that have drained us physically, emotionally, spiritually, and most important, financially. And they ain't pouring not one thing back into you. See, deliver us from people who complain but don't participate. Deliver us people who find problems but won't help solve the problems. They always want to divide, but they never want to unify. See, that's why you have to keep the pastor clean. You have to help him preserve his nets. So he's ready to go out into the deep. So forever, how long he's here at Bowser Creek, we need to love on him. We need to protect him. We need, we, need, we need to cover him. We need to lift him up when he's weak so he can be ready to launch out into the deep. See, 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 these are the supporters that every single person in the building needs in their life. As a matter of fact, if you take three seconds to give God praise for your supporters that pour into you just as much that you pour into them. Oh, I know you got some supporters that pour into you every single day of your life. For the people down through the years that supported you. That showed up when nobody else showed up. <laughs> that stayed beside you when everybody else talked about you. That kept you when everything else was going wrong. See, 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 if you, you need people in your life that make you better. People to help take the weight off and not put the weight on. See, see, I know if, if, in the building, Pastor, uh, if you give me a little bit more time, you understand that. The next thing the scripture says is the ministry of the net. You got to understand the ministry of the net. See, this is not the net that you could go to Walmart or Bass Pro Shop or, or, or Academy Sports to pick up. See, the, 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 this suggested was a trimmel net. This was a net that was made up of three layers netting with, with, with one small layer of inner netting between two big layers that stretched from one boat to another with weights on the bottom and floated to the top. And, and it's 100 feet long. See, 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 the net said you understand how I work, but you need to understand my ministry. My ministry is only effective <laughs> if I get dropped. Oh, I'm going to say that. It went over somebody's head, but I'm going to bring it over here. The ministry is only effective when you get dropped. See, see, you have to be let down for my ministry to be worth anything. I know this sounds out of the ordinary, but it's, it's, it's definitely, but if you take a few seconds to thank God for the, for the days, the seasons, the relationships, and the people that let you down. Yeah, 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 that's tough. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> when you've been dropped, but you still thank God for the people who let you down. I'm glad they let me down. I'm glad they talked about me. <laughs> I'm glad they overlooked me. See, the net, the net said my ministry is done under the water, <laughs> down in the dark, down in the deep, where nobody can see me. Can I help somebody? If your ministry only happens on Sunday morning, when you're in front of everybody, when you can be seen and when somebody can call your name, you need to stop staying in shallow waters. Because I understand that shallow waters only attract shallow people. <laughs> people that talk about ministry but really don't do ministry. See, it, see, it's deep out here. And, and, and some long nights out here, some sleepless nights out here trying to pastor people like us. I'm talking to you, pastor. It's some dark nights. It's some deep nights. When you're dealing with people, us, black folk, church folk. Like us. But I came to thank God that even in the dark, even in the deep, even when I've been dropped and let down sometimes, you still been catching fish. That's just not for pastor, but everybody, because I can see the evidence that the fish you caught down through the years. I thank God for Bazaar Creek. <laughs> 
Because even in the dark nights of slavery, even in the deeps of the wars and the Jim Crowism, even when we were dropped, when the church burnt down, we still catching fish. <laughs> That's why you thank God for a pastor that doesn't serve to be seen, but serve because he loves God's people enough to go down into the deep, <laughs> to be to work in the dark, even when people let you down. Because my ministry is not for you, but it's for the Lord. Because he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. So if nobody sees what I do or calls my name, I'm going to still keep serving. See, I know that what my ministry has done in the dark, I'm going to keep serving. That ministry I'm doing in the deep, I'm going to kill keep serving. That hymn that says, if, if you would give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior is come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. See, 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 I'm going to do ministry where you see me or not. I'm going to do ministry whether you praise me or not. I'm going to keep doing ministry and still operate in ministry when nobody sees me at all. Because when you think about how God has kept you in the dark, how God has kept you in the deep, how he's kept you when people talked about you and dropped you. And guess what? I'm looking at evidence you're still here. You're still here. You're still here. But if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't know how to handle the deep. I wouldn't know how to be handle stuff in the dark. And I wouldn't know when people let me down. <laughs> tell, your, tell your neighbor real quick, do ministry anyway. Tell your, tell your other neighbor, keep serving. <laughs> As a matter of fact, tell your own self, keep serving. <laughs> You, you have to have some supporters of your net. You have to know the ministry of the net. But you also have to understand the strain of the net. <laughs> the Bible says too much is given, much is required. <laughs> the Bible also says he will not put more on you than you can bear. But he never said he won't go put you some strains on your life. See, see, many of us have been called to carry a heavy load, as our pastor does every day of his life. And it don't mean you won't get stressed out sometimes. See, some of us are carrying some hairy loads right here this morning. It's putting a strain on your life. See, the nets are made to carry heavy loads, made to keep to hold all this stuff. That's what it's constructed to do, but it still gets stressed. See, in, in text verse number four, it says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down my nets. But verse number six gets good to me. He says, When they did done this, they caught so many trout, so many brim, so many crappy. Oh, I, oh I'm country. It's okay. It's so many flounder, so many, so many mullets. So many porgies and all that spots and all that stuff that the nets begin to break. They begin to break. It's about to break. But guess the, the good news that it was about to break, but it didn't break. <laughs> it was about to break, but it didn't break. This is when I need to talk to the folk that been through some stuff. This ain't about the people who ain't been through nothing. You can go on down and be ready for your wings and your pizza. But I came to talk to some people who been through some stuff. And, and the people who go on downstairs, they're going to hear some foot stomping. They're going to hear some hands clapping. They're going to hear some thank you, Lord, and hallelujah. And, and, and it's because my God made sure that my nets were stretching. But it didn't break me. Turn to your neighbor, preach to them for a second. I don't know your story, <laughs> and I might not know your story, <laughs> but there's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> I give God because it didn't break me. <laughs> they talked about me, but it didn't break me. They told me I wasn't ready to be a pastor, but it didn't break me. They lied on me, but it didn't break me. I lost some friends, but it didn't break me. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills, but it didn't break me. Well, I went through that divorce, but it still didn't break me. See, I lost some loved ones this year, but it still didn't break me. <laughs> Thank God it didn't break you. <laughs> Thank God it didn't break you. Thank God it didn't break you. <laughs> because you were beginning to break. <laughs> but just in the nick of time, he picked you up. 
He turned you around. And he placed your feet on solid ground. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him because it didn't break you. Give God glory because it didn't break you. Lift him up because it didn't break you. Honor him because it didn't break you. See, many of us are carrying that heavy load. Carrying that heavy load every day. And it's, you feel those stresses every day. But it didn't break you. People thought you was about to break. <laughs> the boss thought you was about to break. Matter of fact, the enemy wanted you to break. That's not what the Bible said. The, enemy, the Bible comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? So the enemy came to make sure your nest broke. <laughs> but thank God I serve a God that keeps me from falling <laughs> and never fails. <laughs> thank him. <laughs> thank him because I didn't break. <laughs> thank him because I didn't break. <laughs> This week's stuff got a little tough, but remember, nothing is going to break me. The surgery didn't break me. The cancer didn't break me. The heartache didn't break me. The funerals didn't break me. The haters didn't break me. But, 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 but listen, listen real quick. I told you earlier in the text about this tremble net, right? The tremble net has three layers. One for the father. <laughs> Two for the Son, and it's good Baptist fit. Three for the Holy Spirit, amen? <laughs> but the net said, but the net said, you got to understand your supporters, what the ministry of my nets and the straining in my nets. But he said, one more thing, I got to give you. And I'm going to the house, okay? <laughs> the net said, uh, he started getting happy when I was talking to him. I said, what's wrong with the net? The net said, oh, oh, it's about to get good. He said, did you feel the shift? He said, did you feel the shift? The net said, if you look back in the text, oh, I'm still in the Bible for some people who's questioning me. He, he said, he been out there all night doing ministry and ain't caught nothing. And was doing what I was supposed to do, fulfilling my purpose, but it was something missing. You were built to carry the load, but if, if it's the, that one thing is missing, it's going to frustrate you <laughs> because it's not going to go as planned. That net they said that net, that net, that net, that net. But when Jesus stepped <laughs> into the boat, <laughs> the net said there was a shift in the atmosphere. When he stepped on the boat, there was a shift going on on the boat. Now, all night they hadn't caught nothing. But when, the, when Jesus stepped on the boat, <laughs> And Jesus said, cast out into the deep. <laughs> Simon said, if you say so. So they went out to the deep, dropped the cast, and what happened? <laughs> they started catching fish and more fish and more fish. And I just came to let somebody know when Jesus steps in, demons begin to tremble. When Jesus steps in, all fear is gone. When Jesus steps in, the impossible becomes the possible. When Jesus steps in, there's something that happens. And I came to talk to somebody when Jesus stepped in your body. It was like fire shut up in my bones because Jesus got in my body. See, I don't have it all together, but Jesus will still step in. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I know we're in this gene stuff and everybody loves sanctified, but when Jesus stepped into you, <laughs> He steps into people who got problems. He steps into sinners' bodies. He steps into people who've been frustrated, talked about, hurt, misused, mistreated. But when he steps in, <laughs> he fixes it. He changes it. He works it out. He handles it. He shifts it. He, 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 he transforms it. He solves it. That's why the word, the Bible, I mean, the scripture said, I mean, the song says, through it all. <laughs> through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. <laughs> I've learned to trust in God. <laughs> through it all. That's why, that's why the, the last thing the net said, I'm just going to throw this out there. The last thing the net told me to tell you is, your owner, I learned something from my owner because he had the right response. He said, Master. If you say so. In the text, Jesus instructs Simon to go out deep 
And because of the trust of Jesus, he'd been out all night. He said, Master, if you say so, I stopped by to tell you that if it doesn't look like, it, it might not look right. You might not can see it right now. You might not can imagine it right now. But if the master instructs you, just say, Master, <laughs> if you say so. Master, if you tell me to write the book, if you say so. If you say so, write that business plan. If you say so, start that ministry. If you say so, join the choir. If you say so, join the usher board. If you say so, join the kitchen ministry. If you say so, I'll, I'll forgive people that, that hurt me over and over again. If you say so, <laughs> and, and, and I remember a man. I'm closing. I remember a man <laughs> that told his father, if you say so. <laughs> this same man was the one that stepped onto the boat. <laughs> this same man is the one who told his father, if you say so, <laughs> I'll grab this old rugged cross <laughs> and climb that mountain <laughs> where they talked about me, where they spit on me, where they beat me, where they put, where they put thorns on my head and nails in my hands, and they hung me up high. They stretched me out wide. I hung my head. <laughs> and I said, it is finished. But oh, three days later, <laughs> oh, three days later, if you say so, <laughs> the greatest blessing that has ever came true in this world was that he, you got eternal life. <laughs> Only by having the right response. If you say so. All of us got problems, issues, everything else going on. <laughs> but if God speaks to you, if you say so, I'll go. If you ask me to, I'll do it. Even though it don't, you don't understand it, you don't see it, it don't make sense to you, it looks too big for you, it, may, it, it looks like it's too large for you to handle. I learned a long time ago, if, if it seems like you can do it tomorrow, it ain't God talking to you, that's just you talking to yourself. Because, see, God only gives you stuff that don't make sense to the people around you. See, God gives stuff. That's, that's why I tell you, you got to be careful who prophesies to you. Because if you ain't heard it yourself, that ain't prophecy. That's just somebody trying to give your money. So if God says so. <laughs> if God says so. So you need to understand the ministry of the net. You got to make sure your supporters are right around you. <laughs> you got to understand all this stuff. And when you understand this, let me help you out and we're going to go. It's not too much longer. Because it only lasted <laughs> from verse number one and verse number six. So... If, and, and in verse number seven, there's so much abundance that he had to call his homeboy to come help him out. Just because he said so. And I just stopped by to let somebody know it's not going to be too much longer. You, you've been waiting a little bit too long. You've been stressing about too much stuff. You know, but guess what? Your verse number two might be happening now. My verse number six is right around the corner. To God be the glory <laughs> for the great and marvelous things he has done. If there is one this morning who wants to know this Jesus that we're talking about, this Jesus that calls us to go out into the deep, this Jesus that calls us to go out into the dark and do ministry, <laughs> this Jesus that keeps us, strengthens us, fixes us, transforms us. If you look around this room, you see a whole bunch of miracles, a whole bunch of testimonies, a whole bunch of trials and truths where you can see that God is good. If there's one this morning who wants to know this, Jesus, we open the doors of the church for you this morning. Also, if there's one that wants to join Bowser Creek Missionary Baptist Church, 
I tell people all the time, we're not a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God. And because we serve a perfect God, we might not all have it together, but when God steps into the boat called Battle Creek, everything (laughs) shifts and gets in place. Amen? Amen. Is there one? Is there one? If not, we want to call our healed and set free list. Amen? Amen. We, we, we're praying that God is touching them wherever they are right now. No matter whether it's the retirement home, the, the, the hospital, the, the, the um, uh, living facilities, anywhere they are, and even at home, we know that God can be right here. But be where they are as well at the same time. So we lift up Sister Texana Washington. We lift up Sister Mary Davis. We lift up Sister Lola Booker. We lift up Sister Irene Baldwin. We lift up Sister Ruby Watson. We lift up Sister Dorothy Bell. We lift up Sister Lucille Moore. We lift up Sister Mary Mary Hood Sanders. We lift up Sister Andrea K. Moore. We lift up Sister Christine Stewart. We lift up Sister Tracy Taylor. We lift up Sister Sandra Gray. We lift up Sister Jean Hedgepeth. We lift up Sister Marie Clark. We lift up Brother Jesse Lucas. We lift up Sister... Darkest Woods, we lift up Brother Walter Garrett, we lift up Brother David Perkins, we lift up Sister Phyllis McLeod, McClaymore, we lift up Sister Dorothy McKinney, we lift up Deaconess Margaret Green, we lift up Deacon Catherine Jeffries, we lift up Brother Tommy McLean, we lift up Thomas, Brother Thomas Spence, we lift up Brother Alvis Walker, we lift up Brother Tony McDowell, we lift up Brother Robert Jones, we lift up Deacon Oscar Steele, we lift up Deacon Jimmy Evans, we lift up Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, we lift up Brother William Hodge, we lift up Brother Larry Norris, we lift up Brother Justin Malik Hodge, we lift up Brother James Turk Sr., we lift up Brother Lamont Parton, we lift up Dennis Slade, and we lift up Brother Thomas Jackson, and we lift up Sister uh, Lillian Harrell. Now, before we do that, I, you might have somebody who you know needs to be healed and set free. And I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to put their name in the atmosphere. Because God hears everybody's name. So if you got a child that you want to get back to the church, lift them up. If you got a family member that's dealing with some sickness right now, lift them up. If you got somebody dealing with some death right now, lift their family up. God hears our prayers, <laughs> and, it's, and it is so, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, as we prepare for communion. As we, as we prepare for communion, has everybody been served? That's what I'm talking about. You want to be excited about getting communion. (laughs) When we were kids, we were so excited to be able to take communion. (laughs) Then when we get grown, we act like we don't want to take communion. We used to run to the back of the church just to drink the juice and eat the crackers. As we prepare for communion, I want you to take 30 seconds. Forget about everybody around you. One thing about communion, you got to understand this is something personal. This is not this is not something you can do with your neighbor. And I ask you to search yourself for the next 30 seconds. If you need to ask for forgiveness, if you need to ask get some stuff right, just just do it right now. Then I want you to also think about how good God has been in your life. And how he kept you. And this is the reason why we take communion to celebrate his ultimate sacrifice. As we hear the music play. That gives you strength. From day. But my favorite part. It will never lose. 
Let us bless the communion table. Grace of God, we thank you for this day, God. God, we thank you for the priest wherever, God, now we want to thank you for giving your son as the ultimate sacrifice. And because you gave your son, we now have everlasting life. So as we prepare for this communion, God, and remember your son, we just say thank you. You know, God, as we search our own selves and asking for forgiveness and, 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 and thinking about the things, how we need to work on some stuff and remember some stuff and remembering you, God. God, I thank you for the dress down Sunday because it allows us not to look at what people got on, but to look at ourselves. Now, gracious God, bless these, bless this bread and bless this, and bless this juice, this wine. And we'll continue to remember it day after day after day in your precious name. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord accounts that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he, 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 he took his disciples in a room and fellowship with them. He taught them some stuff and was trying to prepare them for what was to come. So he grabbed this unleavened bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body that will soon be broken for you. And every day after, remember my sacrifice and do this in remembrance of me. Let us all take the bread and eat and live. And in the same manner, took the cup of wine. <laughs> he had it. He blessed it. He said, this is my blood that I will soon sacrifice for each and every one of you. He said, this will be a new covenant that I have with you. He said, so do this in remembrance of me. Let us all drink and live. The scriptures record that we go out singing hymns. Now today we've got some other stuff going on. But can we get a little bit of hymn a little bit for a second? Have a presentations, amen. Presentations. You looking surprised, but they told me that's what's going on. Praise God. We bless the Lord, amen. What the word good? Come on, let's launch out into the deep and if the nets could talk. Wasn't that word good? Are your hearts burning this morning? Let's give the preacher the hour hand. Come on, because the God that lives in me and lives in you surely lives in him, amen? That comes from much prayer. That comes from much fasting and studying, amen? Ah, he's a word. He's got word in him, amen? And I bless the Lord this morning. We thank him for who he is and all that he's doing. After the presentations, after benediction, we ask that everybody, everybody, every, everybody, please exit this way. We have EMS handling one of our members in the back, so please exit this way. Amen. Amen. So we're going to move out of the way for our presentation, which is going to be Lisa Rayner. Come on up, woman of God. Hello, everybody. 
Bowser Creek, how you guys doing? Preach or preach? Preach or preach? That was not just food. That was good food. That was good food. On this pastor's anniversary, I would like for all of the Pastor Aid ministry um, ministers, the ministers of the Pastor Aid, please stand. You're here. Please stand. Some of our members are downstairs preparing our wings and things to go along with our jeans. And so, therefore, I'm not going to stand before you too long. But I just want to take the opportunity to say, if you read your program, this was not for me to do today. But God. But God. So for my adopted family, I am Sister Betty today. My adopted family, let her know how we went and how we did. To my pastor. If God could speak through me, and I know that he can, he would say, I see you. All the late nights, all the early mornings not just taking care of your house, but taking care of his house. He would say, I see you. He would say, it's been tough, sometimes rough, but I see you. I walk with you. I talk with you. I feed you as you feed us. I see you. If I could say three little words, more words on behalf of the pastor Dave ministry I'd like to read this part and I know everybody in the church is feeling the same way to have a minister to have a father a godly father who picks up the phone I'm telling my story who texts in a second that I have to say, God, that was quick. Remember that? Remember that text? That was quick. On his after hours, he sees you. I see you. We're here to support you. And where we stand, this is easy. But understand, just to take care of your own house, I want to give you context. You're taking care of your own house, the men in here. You are taking care of your house. He's taking care of his house. And he's taking care of this house. This is God's ministry. Let's do what we can to support him. Don't make his burden heavy. We need to make his burden he asked me to do something for him one time, and I was like, what? My fear jumped in. Immediately after service, I went up to him, and I told you, I will never be fearful again. Call on me when you need me, and I will be here for you. And I meant it. Hear the words of our ministry. Hear the words of your flock. You are a gift to the congregation. We are grateful for the way you love God's word. Shepherd your flock. Serve the community in and out of these walls and stand on God's solid rock. From life's happiest moments to the most difficult days, your care, leadership, and dedication to truth have not wavered. You are faithful servants to the Lord, and we are eternally grateful for you. I'm going to leave you with a verse of scripture. Sorry, the eyes are getting a little bit older. Romans 
for I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through, through you. Philemon, first chapter, seventh verse. We are happy that you are our pastor. We are blessed to have you. Happy anniversary to you and your family. As we stand on our feet, it's time to go. When it's all said and done, <laughs> it's time to go. Now, now Pastor, I, I don't have the emotional speech and all that stuff that Sister Raina just did, and I don't have a sweet card and all that stuff. I got a manly gift over here. It, it, you know, it gets your beer right. I don't, you know, so, yeah, so I got you. So just pick up your bag over here, yeah. <laughs> As we prepare for the benediction and the grace, amen. So we can go downstairs and eat wings and pizza. <laughs> Get your napkins ready. Hope they got some little wet wetlets and stuff out of there. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, God. What a beautiful day has been to celebrate the second pastoral anniversary of our pastor, God. Now, God, first we want to bless the food that it be nourishment to our body for Christ's sake. Bless the hands that prepared it. <laughs> and make sure that it blesses our physical body as we continue and listen to your word to fill our spiritual bodies. Now, gracious God, as we leave this place, God, and never from your presence, God, we ask you to keep us in the deep. Keep us in the dark. That we might be fishermen of men. Now, remember, as we leave this place, there's nothing today that's going to happen that you and God cannot handle together. I'm going to say that again. There's nothing today that's going to happen that you and God cannot handle together. Amen, amen, and amen. Everybody say